Yo, 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 what's goody? What's goody, y'all? Happy Thanksgiving and whatever y'all got into Black Friday. Did y'all did y'all cop out on the sales? Which y'all did, man. It's good, you know. I know it's good hearing my voice. I know, I know. I'll I be I'll be in the I'll be in the cut like a band-aid, baby. Like a band-aid. Now, nah, what's good with y'all, man? Um come in and tap in with y'all, you know, it's been a minute. Niggas hit me up, y'all, Corey, when the next podcast, you should have mad shit to talk about. I, I kind of do, like, <laughs> I kind of do, I kind of fucking do, I kind of fucking do, but um, I'm in good spirits, man, I'm doing good, you know, working, doing the same shit, you know, I upgraded in therapy, I used to be uh, once every week, then I turned into once every two weeks, now I'm once a month, you know what I'm saying, so I'm, I'm progressing as far as therapy go. I'm progressing. You got to just stick with me. You know, this Corey Cash podcast, episode 80. Man, I'm just hoping y'all stay black and y'all ate good. If you're still eating them Thanksgiving leftovers, yeah, inside you have the insides of a zombie, my nigga. What are you doing? Are you poor? Are you are you poor? Fuck is you still eating Thanksgiving leftovers for? Are, are you poor? All right, you're not poor. All right, so let's get into it, man. Um, I find myself taking a trip. Damn, what the fuck? I find myself taking a trip when it come to dating. And the common thing I learned is you women don't like niggas with boundaries. And y'all don't want to be held accountable. And I see it as a common thing. So I try different approaches to this thing as far as it held accountable because I'm seeing a common a common thing is that people don't really understand. When you make a selfish decision about isolating yourself, whether you feel like, hold on. Oh shit, my fault. Um, you know, I got transferred. I was working in a school uptown, but now I'm transferred to a more closer school. So custodian was hitting me, telling me to pull up tomorrow, whatever the case may be. Um, damn, I was talking about dating. All right, so getting back to dating, the level of sensitivity I think like women use. See, women and kids have this thing where they could rely on innocence. Women could lie, and then you can t- you have to take it on the chin. Kids could lie, and you have to rely on the innocence. I think that women. Uh, awfully do that shit and when you address a woman about holding her accountable it's oh i wasn't thinking of that but in life as men you you're taught women are smarter than men and women are smarter than men they 10 steps ahead so me as a person i think 10 steps ahead as well and i just think that i could call bullshit when i see it and one of the things i'm having a problem with i guess the seriousness that i come with and i guess that when they talk to me, I'm sounding like an older nigga, and I'm sounding like a nigga that's gonna hold them accountable. They don't like that. Like it's not that they turned off. It's like vegetables. It's good for you, but it, it might taste bad. It's it's I'm vegetables to women. You know what I'm saying? So it's not a bad thing. It's coming with a gift and a curse. And I think that the thing that I've came across is that I'm not a nigga that you could just like a toy. Like you could just pick me up and talk to me when you want to, and, and then put me down. And I'm, it's not like it's just one specific person. This is like spread across. I don't know if other men are having this issue. Um, what I was getting about about making selfish, selfish decisions is that you got to understand that selfish decisions come with consequence. You might be making a selfish decision as far as like putting yourself ahead or a deleting a drama out your life. But it's going to come with consequences. Like friends is going to feel some type of way. Like they don't hear from you when your comment, your behavior changed. So people tend to have to come a cut your real friends will come accustomed to your behavior changing friends that aren't familiar with you will have to they might become disgruntled and displeased and i think that a lot of people feel like they're not obligated to say well this is what i'm doing if i'm if it seems like i'm acting funny this is what i'm doing it's all about communication as far as being selfish and i think that a lot of people are not elaborating these things and i do that find that i come across women that's probably in a space where they want to heal and 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 self-reflect and want to be in a place that accountability is not doesn't feel like an attack. I get that part, but you got to communicate when you're making those those transitions. You know what I'm saying? Because those transitions is is I'm never a nigga that's that selfish that's gonna say, 
Um, now nah, talk to me rather than you search and find out who you who you are and do the self search, the soul self searching. And I think that a lot of women do that shit. And when it come to me, I'm a straight up and I'm a direct person. So I'm learning a, a lot about myself. Like I'm even direct as far as like like sex or making a first move. Like I don't want you to plant seeds. I want you to tell me that you want to have sex with me rather than if you tell me that you want to engage in that type of activity, I can take it from there rather than you leave clues. I like direct shit. I think 31, I just like direct shit. I don't like all this other hands. Well, when I did this, when I liked a few pictures, that should have indicated I was, and ah, tell me you interested. Like, it don't got to come out your mouth, but just say you cute or something, you handsome. And all you got to do, ladies, y'all shots is 100%. All y'all got to do is say a nigga handsome, like a little bit too much of pictures. And then a nigga going to be like, all right, so she want to talk to me. Y'all can't be scared of that. So with this dating shit, I just find that weird. I'm just finding myself going through different, like, um, various things. Now I found like, I'm on, I, I found, I end up talking to a fucking, I think 47 or 57. She, I think she probably was 47. Right. And we was talking, um, as we talking, she wrote me at like fucking two o'clock in the morning. And she was like, she's a Bronx woman that was in the military. Now, it's going good into this point for me, like, to be honest with you. So she goes, be honest. You Are you talking to other girls? Do you engage with other girls and all of this? How, let me see if I can find that text. She said, real talk, how many females have you connected with on social media? And I said, elaborate. She said, um, talk offline, met up. I said, I'm not meeting with no, none of these women. I'm texting a few, gotcha. But I don't even date. So I'm not meeting up with none, understood. She texted me this at 2 o'clock in the morning. Now, I felt like I just had to explain to her, like, that's type aggressive. Me and you don't have that. We don't share that that type of rapport to where you can press me about talking to girls. Me and you have not linked. We had, like, and I said it can't come up aggressive. She, bro, she was so narcissistic, bro. Like, narcissistic traits is like, no, that's your perspective. That's how you grew up. So that that's aggressive to you. And I said, I'm telling her, like, it can't be a girl. How you going to tell somebody what's aggressive to them? Like, you telling me you not. And I'm like, yo, listen, I, I said I could find that aggressive. And I didn't even say it was aggressive. And I just think that, personally, she was doing too much. So then we had got into a back and forth. And I was just like, yo, bro, she's she got narcissistic traits. She And then the problem with older women is that they feel like because you're a young nigga, they can talk to you however. I'm not the nigga that's going for it. You could talk to them other niggas because other niggas be mad hype. They talking to older women that look good. I don't give a shit. Like, I don't give a fuck that you look good and you 47. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't care. It's all about respect for me. And then if we was just going at it, I'm like, damn. What the fuck am I doing with my life that I'm talking to a 47-year-old? Like, the fuck? Am I, am I, not, am I that bored? You know what I'm saying? But you start to think it's you, but then you come out the atmosphere, right? Like, I have a friend, right? And she dates women. And she was telling me it's hard for her. So it's not the men that's the fucking issue. She telling me it's hard for her. I ain't never hear no gay men complain about. I got gay male friends. I ain't never hear no gay men come to me and tell me that the niggas out here ain't shit. Because men, like, you, even though you're a gay man, you still got a logical mind. Like, I, the, men, the men that I'm choosing to date might not be shit. But y'all, it's the women, bro. Y'all got all this sexual liberation which is bullshit. Sexual liberation is bullshit. It's just saying that it's right to objectify y'all, but y'all don't want to be objectified, but then y'all want to claim y'all oppressed. Which one you want? I noticed that women just want the rules to, to bend to where they benefit from it, but they don't want the curse that come with the rules. But they don't, women have a weird concept of not understanding that life is just not fair. Like, it, yeah, I agree with you. It shouldn't, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be um, rapists or, or sexual assault people walking around the world. It shouldn't, but it's the reality of it. It is every man is not attractive and attractive enough to pull girls. I'm not approving or condoning rapists. I'm just telling these are the things that realistically that every like a lot of men are lonely. Like a lot of men see other men having fun, and they want to engage and they can't engage. So that's why you got men that buy pussy. And you got some men that take it. I hate to be insensitive. I don't want to be insensitive to rape um rape victims. Like I'm I'm being. Uh, I swear to God, like, I'm not being insensitive, but I'm just telling you the reality of a situation. Y'all want to bend the rules to benefit y'all, but 
Y'all don't want the curse that comes with it. It's a curse with showing off your body. Yes, as a woman, you should be able to walk down the alley at night with a skirt on that is past your knees. And and your, your booty cheeks is hanging out and nobody should talk to you, say nothing to you. But that's not a reality of life. And y'all have a hard time with dealing with reality. And a lot of these things that we talk and preach to y'all are realities. And y'all have a and y'all have a hard time grasping the concept of reality. And it's true. Even the expectations thing. Like when y'all talk about, I want a six foot nigga that makes six figures. First of all, most like what, four percent, what, nine or seven percent, less than 10% of men are in the six figure category. Like just six figures alone. That's just talking about a hundred thou. It's not talking about 250. That's not, that's just a hundred thou. Then a lot of males is not six feet. Then a lot of males is not here. Like you pick it from a small percentage of men and you want it to be spread across you and the girlies. Because all you women are saying, y'all want the same thing. Y'all want the same thing as far as like the, the physical features and which I want him to come with. And what I learned is I'm watching women. I'm watching. I'm I'm watching a handful of women come alive on TikTok, become woken, and they say, "Yo, I just had to come to reality that, like, ladies, if the nigga is if the nigga is tall and handsome, he might be lacking in the bed, or he might be a dumbass. He might be a dickhead. If the nigga is is packing, and he's good in the bed. He might be mid." If the nigga is tall and handsome and he got the hammer on him, he going to be a liar. You got to pick your poison, ladies. It's not it's a, not a reality. You can't have all three in one minute. If you did, yo, you just hit the jackpot and you got to stay with that nigga. But ladies, that's not a reality. You're not going to just walk down the block and then the nigga six feet, six feet, and he good in bed. Like, it's, you got to take what you can get in this life. And a part of me want to bring, and a part of me, this is random, but a part of me be wanting to bring back bullying because I be seeing some ugly ass people make requests out their realm. Like it's this girl with ashy ass lips that's on TikTok talking about she's ugly as shit. And I don't really go in on women like that. And she's saying, if um if I'm dating the man, I want him to spend his money on me and and not and and um I don't spend my money on him. Mind you, she a five or four. She wild, ugly, and she making this type of request. But in today's society, we can't say nothing because y'all sensitive. So now we got to. She got to live in a fantasy, and y'all in the comments like, "Go on, girl." And if she don't get hit with reality, and she think that this is really a reality. See, the thing is that I learned about women. I'm gonna give y'all some free game, like some dead ass free game, women, ladies. Look at you. Look at the cutest girl and the most attractive girl in your group. Let's take a group of five or seven. Look at the most attractive girl in your group. Do she make the same request you make online or in person? When y'all have y'all girl talk, is the most attractive girl talking about I need this and I need that? Nine times out of ten, no. Because you play in that realm. You bump shoulders with those type of people. You don't see doctors saying I need to date doctors. If you in that realm, you'll date people in that realm. Like when I worked in the school, I'm like, yo, my, my, my therapist kept telling me, you need a bigger pond, you need a bigger pond, you need a bigger pond. I'm like, what the fuck? How do I find this bigger pond? How do I get upon this bigger pond? She was just talking about the group of people. Like, I wanted to make more money, and I wanted to be in a position to where <clears throat> I'm around people that make more money than me. It's not to feel small. It's to be. It's to 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 experience to experience what a lifestyle may be for me. To be inspired to do it, right? So I never talked about like I want women that even though women are not valued by money, I never said these things like I want these beautiful women that got I was with teachers. I like I was with women teachers. I'm chilling with them, I'm going to the bar with them. These are teachers. So I'm around that realm. So when you people are asking for these people that y'all 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 feel like y'all deserve, you don't deserve it because you're not in that realm. You not in that lifestyle. So you have to request these things. These things is fantasies to you because you haven't applied the proper work in your life to be around these type of people. And I think that that's what I talk about. Reality just don't hit y'all. Like you see how when the therapist told me that, 
I lived in a reality. How do I get around these people? And then naturally I got around these people because I started putting myself in the DOE system. So now I hang around custodians. I hang around um, 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 teachers. I hang around these people that make it six figures. I hang around, I, I really hang around these people. Like I really hang around these people. And I see the common denominator in them is they have relationship issues. They don't have money issues. We have us as that people that don't make that money. We have money issues and relationship issues. So it's about conquering one plot, one part, part of your life and getting to the next. And then when you end that round, you see, I right, this ain't shit. It's just people with money. So what is the next step? I need the next challenge. Like I'm really around people that make six figures, bro. Like I've seen shit like I'm around custodians, like for real, like to be honest with you. And if in my position, as far as a janitor, if I chose to do overtime like Saturdays and maybe Sundays, I can make around 60 to 70 K in a year. But I would never, I'm not, I'm not a simp. I'm not about to get that type of money to be attractive to women. I would get that type of money because I personally want that type of money. I want that money to buy shit. I want that money to go places. I want that money to get a car. You know what I'm saying? So ladies, you just got to play in your realm. And I just think that people are not humble and playing in their realm. The dating scene is, 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 is telling, um, society, I'm not society, social media is telling women to have standards, but these are unrealistic standards. But when we say something, it's, oh, y'all mad because a woman can, no, you don't play in that field. And we cannot say you ugly, you are I. Right. We can't say it today because the world is sensitive. So now it's like you're judging. Then it, then then you. I'm not trying to be funny. When it comes to the internet, y'all love to pull out all oh, black woman card. Y'all love to pull that shit. When it just be like regular shit, it don't got nothing to do with your skin color to us. And it's, it gets personal because it's like you telling a black woman she shouldn't have standards. No, I'm telling you, you should play in your realm. I'm not saying that you should want higher, and you, you should. But you gotta understand in this life and social media today, we all chasing people that don't want us. The hood niggas want the bitches with the BBLs. They can't afford them. You niggas is scamming, so y'all niggas is and y'all niggas is more likely to go to jail. Y'all playing along the line of your freedom. So you're not gonna, you gotta keep maintenance on the bad bitch. You gotta pay for her head. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas is all chasing people that don't want them. You girls that's are uh, uttering that y'all want six foot niggas, y'all the six foot niggas don't want y'all, they got options. So everybody's playing this game, bro. This shit is a game. This shit is a real life game, like for real, for real. And it gets it. And when you fall into this rabbit hole of the things you want and what you feel like you deserve, bro, if you put the effort into it, you'll be around it. Trust me, you'll naturally just be around it. You don't. That's why I said go to the baddest girlfriend in your friend group. The baddest girl in your friend group don't ask for nothing. Them niggas come to her. She don't have to ask. She's just that attractive that she rubs shoulders with niggas that get money. Nigga might be a lawyer, nigga might be a scammer. She just naturally gets those things, niggas paying for her shit because she look good. She's not requesting it. And my thing is the sense of acknowledgement is I want you to look at yourself. Do you look like her? No, you don't look her. That's why you're asking for it. She don't have to ask. Playing into reality, like that's what I'm trying to say. Look at the baddest. This is how women should gauge it. And because I'm only saying this because women, y'all naturally compare yourself to other women. Oh, speaking about comparing yourself to other, I got a story. I'm going to get into that. Y'all naturally compare yourself into other women. Y'all become insecure because y'all looking at these women on, on online with BBLs and, and, and that are getting mad likes on the Instagram, but they're not telling you that they're coming from a dark place. They're not telling you that when they got BBL, they almost died. They couldn't um, sit. On, they couldn't sit. You got to lay on your stomach. You bleeding from, like, come on. Like, it's mad shit that come with this BBL. Then y'all getting BBLs to come back to the hood and live in the projects. You saved up 6K, but you couldn't save up 6K to move out or prepare to move out or for a car. My thing is, if you want to make this type of investment and put your life on the line just to get a fat ass, my nigga, make sure you make that money back. I don't give a fuck if it's only thing. Make sure you make that money back, bro. This investment is going to, like... And this is the crazy part because the BBL culture got black women in the chokehold and it's fucked up. It's real fucked up because y'all y'all in denial about I don't do this for a man. Y'all wouldn't be mad happy if y'all got a thousand like from a thousand women. Y'all want men to fiend over y'all. So like this in denial, like I don't do shit for men. That is cap. It's cap. It, ladies, if you got your hair done. You walk down the block and no nigga said you look beautiful. Niggas just mind their business. You would be like, what the fuck I paid 300 for these box braids for? 400 and I sat in the chair for eight hours. For no nigga to compliment me is cap. 
We both, nigga, we get haircuts for women. We never gonna be in denial about that. It's a lot of shit that y'all in denial about. Like, it's cap. The BBL culture got women. Like, yo, think about this shit. Bro, girls is only getting BBLs to look good on social media. Not saying they don't look. If Instagram never existed, BBL culture wouldn't even be a thing. They're getting BBLs for an app to hopefully come up, come up on a rich nigga. Hopefully. Black women are almost dying to look good on social media. This shit is crazy, bro. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit is sad. Like, shit is real sad. Like, the BBL culture just got black women in the chokehold. And if the app never existed, you know what I'm saying? It'd be a to- we talk a totally different story. Um, Another thing about the dating apps. Oh, I got to tell y'all about this shit. Oh, my God. Yo, so look. <clears throat> I'm on a date and I'm on Hinge, right? So I meet this girl, dark skin girl. Dark skin, beautiful woman. According to the pictures, I have to insert that. <laughs> um, we was supposed to link, and she's like, "Yo, I'm about to go over there where you live, the shopping area." Boom, boom, boom. So I'm like, "I, I'm about to pull up because I wanted to go to the supermarket anyway to go grab some stuff because I was going to cook." So during this time, she just like, she's doing funny shit. Like, like I didn't understand, like. Something was just off. You know how you just meet somebody and they do the, the first link up just goes weird? And then they on some, like, y'all not connected type shit. It's on some, like, what is this person hiding type shit. So I'm like, all right. So I'm trying to, I, I, I'm, I've i learned patience. So I'm being patient with her. Um. So she, like, apologizing, like, I'm sorry. And then she was like, I got anxiety meeting people for the first time and et cetera. So I went to go pick up, oh, I went to go pick up my, my um five hour uh slip because I was trying to get my I'm trying to get my driver's license. So I'm like, yo, meet me near the train. So I walked to the train and she was at the train. I give a hug, she like, you smell mad good. Unbeknownst to me. I'm hold on, cause I gotta <laughs> my nigga. I'm looking at her, 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 like, the Adam's apple area. There's no Adam's apple. But I st- noticed it was facial hair. Now, if you have PS, PCOS, tell me. Before we, like, take a picture with you with a full beard and, bro. Like, I was, like, fascinated and disgusted at the same time. Like, it's hard to explain. Because it's like, you got more than me, so I'm fascinated. I'm like, yo, why would God not? I'm the male. Why would God not provide me with like facial hair, like mustache and 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 a beard? Like it looked like she just shaved it, so it was like, why would God not give me that? But then I'm disgusted in the same sense because I wouldn't fuck her because if one bit of facial hair touches me, I'm instantly turned off. Like, and I think the signs early was the polygamous relationship and just like have his low self-esteem. I just feel like men deserve more than one woman and da, 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 like, and then she was promoting it. Like, and I'm like, I'm not into polyamory, like to be honest with you, but if that's your thing, that's your thing. You know what I'm saying? Queen. But she had a, like a fucking five o'clock shadow. I was just, that's what made me delete the app. I'm like, at that point, yo, I'm deleting this shit because y'all not telling the truth about yourselves. Like y'all popping up with facial hair. And not telling niggas, and I think that's like that's very disrespectful because you had more than me and you shaved it, and it looked like you was in a rush before you shaved it. It was I could see like you got a little cut right there, little razor bumps, like and then you could tell like your swipe wasn't right, like you was swiping up when you was shaving. Like it was I was disgusted and fascinated at the same time. I have to say that was quite impressive and disgusting, bro. At the, I, I, when I, I didn't even text her back, bro. Like, I got on that train. I was just like, no, this girl didn't just pop up with, like, a shaved um father. Now, it's out of her, her control. I get it. It, it. Women grow facial hair. But my thing is, I think you should announce those things. Like, if that's a condition that is a physical feature, you should announce those things before we even link or anything. Imagine I pay for a day and you pop up with a fucking bid. My nigga, how I look? I didn't text her. 
So then, let me tell you some crazy shit. So then, I I end up um. I end up going to the fucking gym. So I'm working out in the gym. It's on a weekend. It's on a weekend too. I'm working out in the gym or whatever. And this girl pops up, and she like frantic, like, "Hey, oh, 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 hello!" Like, then I'm on. I got. I'm like, "Let me get away from her," cause now it's getting creepy. Cause I haven't texted her back. I ghosted her. I didn't want to tell her why, cause I didn't want to seem rude. I am a direct person, but I don't want to hurt women' feelings. I got on a treadmill, and she get on the machine that's in front of the mirror, so she could see me on the treadmill. My nigga, she's on her. Uh, 150 sit up on this machine. Oh, no, leg press. My nigga, you don't do much legs. I seen your legs. Why are you on this leg machine for that long to look in the mirror? So now I got extra creepy and I'm just like, yo, bro, I, st- I don't even think I've been back to the gym since. Like, to be honest with you, I felt like mad uncomfortable. Like, you, you being weird and shit. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I get like some people in search of closure on why they got curved, but my nigga, you knew why, bro. You knew why. You knew why, bro. You knew why. And that shit was like insane to me, bro. Why would you do like, why would you do that? Why would you pop up with like, come on, son. Like you, it's getting out of hand, bro. Like things is getting out of hand. Like for real. It's getting out of hand. It's, it's like out of my control and I can't really respect this shit, this dating shit. This dating shit is getting out of hand. It's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Getting back to, 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 to um, when I said I had a story about women comparing themselves, yo. So, yo, I was talking to my woman friend, and she was explaining the story how she was talking to this guy that was a welder. And I just want to set the screen for y'all. Let me set, let me say, this is what I mean. And me and her got into an argument, but it was like a debate. It wasn't a disrespectful argument, but I wanted her to see things from a different perspective, right? So the nigga was a welder. She met the nigga on Plenty of Fish. Now, she has two kids. She's chilling with this nigga. They never had sex, but they gave each other head. Childish. Very childish and immature. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? Y'all like 30. What are you doing? So what she... I, she's talking to the nigga. So she go, do you got a hundred dollars? Can you send me a hundred dollars before I go to Puerto Rico? So here's the test. Now she's setting them up for a test. I said, why are you asking for a hundred dollars? Like that ain't good. They ain't They've been talking for three months. Why are you asking the nigga for money? Oh, he's a welder. It shouldn't mean nothing. If he ain't got a hundred dollars, then I can't fuck with him. I said, oh, whoa, 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 hold on. Wait, 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 wait. You acting like you entitled to his money. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Y'all fucking with each other. You not his girlfriend. He don't got to send you a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars ain't nothing. If you'd have gave me a hundred dollars when I went to Puerto Rico, I would have came back with some souvenirs. Hold on now. You not entitled to that man money. I don't give a fuck if he paid fifty dollars an hour. You not entitled to his money. We going back and forth, back and forth. She thinks on the, I can't fuck with niggas that got him. If if I fuck with you, I got two kids. I gotta know that you put out. But so now you testing a nigga to see if he put out. So this is where you go wrong at, cause you, t- God give you somebody, and then he might not be the perfect nigga. He give you somebody for a chance, and you go testing them because you need to see if he put out. First of all, your two kids is not his obligation. This is the this is the type of mind that women have, bro. This shit is insane to me. This is the type of mind women have, bro. And they will stand on this shit. So we getting further in the conversation, we debating da da da. She, cause she hit me up to talk about it, and she was explaining it, and we was going back and forth. So. She goes to Puerto Rico and her flight is her. Oh, she agreed. He he's into some fantasy shit. Like he wanted her to dress up and look sexy. She said it was nothing to her because she got lingerie in the crib, so she be dancing for the nigga. But I and I told her, "What well, that's your boundary? If you felt like that should have led into you getting money, it should have been a boundary. If y'all not fucking, you knew you wasn't gonna fuck him unless he was spending money. You should have never put the lingerie on and dance. Oh, it's nothing to me. No, you don't have a boundary." And I have to enforce this because a lot of my women friends, they think they have boundaries. And I be telling them, y'all don't have boundaries. Y'all swear to God, y'all in control of shit. But niggas don't want a title. Y'all, I, I, well, here, I never get this. Niggas will rather fuck y'all raw and not have a title forever. We could do that forever. We men. The only time a nigga will get a title is so he could just have a pussy to himself. 
Other than that, nigga don't care. And some niggas don't even care about other niggas getting the pussy because he know he fucking you better than other niggas. So, I right, so we get into the bait, right? Um, she was, and I told her I was trying to tell she ain't got boundaries. She's arguing me about boundaries. Oh, I got boundaries. No, you don't. No, you don't. Then you letting a nigga come to your house or whatever. And I'm like, he shouldn't come to the house while the kid is there. I get the kid to sleep. I've been a mad girl, so I can't really judge her upon that, but you got to have boundaries in some aspects, right? So then she's explaining. She's, ex, um, she tells me that, oh, she goes to Puerto Rico and then her flight gets delayed. She asked the, she asked the nigga, can you pick me up? He like, I got to see what I'm doing. I'm going to be at the gym. Now, that's all right. I understand why she felt some type of way, but it should have never been expected of him to pick you up. Like, you should have money for an Uber or whatever the case may be. You said you had two racks or in the bank before you asked for This is what she said. She said she had two racks. Um, She had two racks. And she was just asking for a hundred. So why you want to spend another nigga money if you got money? Whether it's true or false, that's on y'all, y'all's yeah, judgment. But this is the type of shit that goes on with men and dating, bro. You get a welder, nigga, and now you expect, like, nigga, you expect a nigga to eventually take care of your kids when your kids is your responsibility. If he becomes a stepdad, he becomes a stepdad, but you don't get to test him in a dating, in a dating space to see if he's going to pay for your kids. My nigga, that's not his responsibility. Now, I'm not going to lie, this woman, I swear to God. She always never, this woman never shitted on her baby father. She never, I mean, I don't like child's fathers, like both, because they both got two different fathers. She never shitted on them. Like, she never, like, talked. She said, yo, Corey, I have great fathers in their life. So, like, this is a good one. This is a good, I think, like, her intentions is good, but, like, the way she living and going about dating is kind of fucked up. And I was trying to get her to see, like, y'all, y'all mind is so fucked up, like, Y'all mind on what y'all think is standing in the city girls telling y'all that y'all deserve shit. Y'all mind be fucked up and I was trying to get it. You don't have boundaries. You feel like you're entitled to niggas' money because niggas make money. And you think that, oh, if he can't save $100 and I can't fuck with him. Like, you don't know if that man got $100. He lived with his brother, so he he paying less for rent. Like, you just was breaking down the situation on why you feel like he should have $100. But it might be $100 not for you. And it was just the entitlement, and we was going at it, and this is my thing. So now she like, yo, I can't fuck with upstate, um, up north niggas. I'm going to move down south. This is where the comparison shit come in that kills me, right? Yeah, my cousin, my cousin got, my cousin got like four kids, and she got a nigga that's taking care of her. I said, you not your cousin. Women do this a lot. My best friend, my cousin, my homegirl, my, you are not dumb. You don't know what she's doing. Nigga be paying all the bills, and as soon as he come home and say, I want my dick, so she get on her knees immediately. You might not be that submissive and obedient. You don't know what she's doing. You don't know what kind of characteristics she carries. She could be telling you, I don't do shit, but then doing everything in the household. Like, stop comparing yourself. Then I have to tell her, that's your cousin. That's not you. Stop comparing yourself to other women. You not her. You not her. You are not her. And she kept doing that. And this is the, what I mean by, like, yo, y'all, the, the women be having, and this is not a myth. I want women to listen to this podcast and really learn shit. Like, I'm not trying to bash you. I'm just bringing all the situations and showing y'all how y'all, sometimes y'all unrealistic and sometimes y'all selfish, and y'all don't see it. And I think that a lot of this have to do with programming of, of little girls. Programming like Disney is made for y'all. Disney is made for y'all because Disney tell the forever tell of the girl getting the, the most beautiful man and being in love and forever and having it. Disney is made for y'all. You never, us as little boys, never fantasize. It's no movie for us. What a lot is not for us. It's for the girls. They don't never, oh, you're going to get your wife and live happy. No, it's no movies like that for men. Boys, as far as far Disney's made for us. Disney and this is the programming. Since a girl, since a girl to tell you, um, they tell boys you don't hit you don't hit um girls. You don't cry. That's girls do that. It's the programming of young boys and young girls, right? Then on top of that, it's no, it's no responsibility as far as women goes as far as making bad decisions. Period. Because niggas niggas ain't start checking girls re to recently about accountability. The reason why it's so much of friction and why y'all feel attacked, because it's not normal. When you criticize a man for doing something, the reason why we might react to it, we know that it's, it happens to us. You you know better, my nigga. You know better than that. Yeah, you hear nigga. Yeah, I know. My fault. Nigga, 
Even Kevin Samuel said when he was criticizing men, it was too easy. Men were understanding they wasn't being combative. Men are used to being held accountable, nigga. Paying child support is being held accountable. You nutted in this girl. You don't want to take care of your kids. All you are taking care of your kids, you got to pay for it. That's being held accountable for an irresponsible decision. It's no law that holds women accountable. Women, y'all can commit the same crimes. Y'all probably go to jail last. Y'all can get y'all way. Y'all can seduce y'all way out of tickets. My nigga, a girl, a woman right now could be, a, a girl, young girl could be right now be born and know that she eventually don't have to, like women get the privilege of saying, I don't want to work. I want to just be a home mom. Because in y'all fantasy, hope, most, most likely y'all hope y'all run up, run down on a rich nigga or have a nigga where I got decent money, stability money. And y'all can make, y'all can get into situations where y'all would abusive men and get a domestic violence case and get an apartment. Y'all could get, y'all could have sex unprotected with men and make an irresponsible decision. This could be the worst nigga on earth and receive child support. So it's no accountability within the law. It's no accountability within society. So... The programming is the, the reason why I have so much friction on not understanding men because y'all not programmed to give a fuck. Y'all not programmed to give a fuck about men. That's why niggas don't give a fuck about their mental health. Niggas ain't start giving a fuck about their mental health until women started pointing it out. Y'all niggas fucked up. Like, this is, this is what I mean. Like, it's nothing, and I'm not saying that y'all just walk life freely and nothing happens to y'all. I'm not being insensitive to the things that women do face, like judgment, micro microaggression at, at jobs. I'm just looking at the, like, the pure responsibility. Like, women can make irresponsible decisions and don't have to really be held accountable for it. We keep talking about patriarchy, but patriarchy got a lot of benefits for women as well. Like, and, and that's the perspective. And then I start to look at it because I sit there and I talk to the women that I've dealt with in the past. And I'm like, yo, I get it because you wasn't programmed to care about me. Just like when women, when women plan niggas birthdays, right? Y'all do what y'all want to do on a nigga birthday. Y'all don't do what the nigga want to do. Y'all ask him, yo, listen, I just want to, um, I just want to go to the spa. Y'all niggas go book a cabin, a fucking spa. You fucking buy him a Mary jeans. The shit that he didn't ask for. You did what you wanted to do. And I had to tell my ex recently, you love me the way you, you love, you love me the way you wanted to love me. You didn't want to love me the way I wanted to be loved. And that's the cross that happens between men and women a lot. A lot. Like y'all love us the way you express love. And y'all, and that's why we not receptive because that's not the way that I was loved or I wanted to receive it. And a lot of y'all think y'all good girlfriends because of that. It's about communication and learning a man's, a man's um, love languages and stuff. Women are not programmed to give a fuck about men, my nigga. So that's why when you find the women that do give a fuck about men and care about men thinking, you keep them and you try to work with them. Women are naturally not programmed. Think about it since a young girl. You was you y'all was getting in boys' faces. Y'all was slapping, putting your hands on men. Now you do find a couple of men that smack the shit out of you today. But my thing is, when we was growing up, boys couldn't even hit girls. Niggas would beat the sh beat the shit out of a little boy, hit a girl. It's programming, bro. Y'all never been held accountable for poor decisions. Even as adults, y'all could just be like, "Fuck it, I don't want to work no more. Let me come up on a rich nigga." Let me slide on a rich nigga DM. You got the privilege of doing that to not being able to be even have the basic. Walks a life as an adult. You could be put in a position where you never got a cookie in. You could be put in a position where you never got to work again. You don't, it's not, it's no, like, it's no, it's no law. We talk about equality. There's no laws that stop women from doing shit. What are you fighting for? Feminists, what are you fighting for? I could see back in the days when women couldn't vote, women couldn't work. Those are laws that put women in a disadvantage. Those are women that now today we talk about equality. Y'all talking about judgment. Y'all want to be able to be sexually liberated. Now we sexually liberated and STD rates is going up. What are we talking about here, bro? This is not a, I'm telling you, this shit is not a reality, bro. That's why I'm more accepting to women now today because y'all are not programmed to give a fuck about men mental health. Y'all don't, y'all don't, why would y'all care? If nobody brought it to attention since a girl, why at 30 would you give a fuck? Why would you care? But I do, the woman that I'm going to be with, the woman that I do take seriously, the women that are choosing to find out and to give a fuck. Like, damn, men, men's mental health is really important. Those are the women that you want to talk to. You don't want to talk to the women that, I deserve this, I deserve that. Like, you know what I'm saying? 
You can make a million of irresponsible decisions as a woman and you're not going to be held accountable by law or society. The only time you was held accountable is being called a hoe by having sex with... And back in the days when you was ha having sex with too many men, you was getting... They was violating you. That's when you was probably being held accountable. Today? No. Y'all sit there and say y'all got OFs and all of this shit, but y'all not telling the women the dark side about it. The dark side about you never could get a man to ma love you. A man that's not in the industry to love you. It's hard for you to date. It's hard for you to be in the relationships. And it's going to be hard for your kids when they got to sit at the lunch table and get roasted because they moms is on OnlyFans. Like, y'all not talking about that part of it. Y'all just showing th this is what I don't like about social media. Not just, it's not just women. People don't show the dark side of shit. Like, my social media, it shows the dark side of shit. I explained, I went through depression, bad breakup, and you see the progression. You see the progression. Now I'm smiling in pictures. Now I'm doing more. Like, you see the progression in me. You got to show niggas the dark side of shit. You can't always show the niggas the good side. And that's what social media shows. It shows all the, the good side of people. It's mainly the good side. And for women especially, it's the good side. The only time they really post in the dark is if they're in the domestic violence. Really, They might show that I, I got hit, I got beat, and stuff like that. Yo, ladies, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's fuck, it's women culture on social media is fucked up. Even when girls disagree with a woman, you a pick me. Y'all call pick me don't even know what it means. It means for the validation of men. It's like you just saying yes for the validation of men. It's just some stupid shit. Y'all calling women pick me. Y'all very nasty to each other when y'all disagree. Y'all go to kids. Y'all talk about kids, dead homies. Y'all violating. It's like men get blamed for some shit that we ain't got no part in. And when I see women go, when men disagree on that social media, it don't go that far as to suck my dick. You, you a bum. I beat you the fuck up. I be seeing y'all be like, you dirty, you ugly. Look, I'm like, why I'm on Twitter right now watching a girl say you built like Rick Ross and Precious and shit like this. And you don't find men doing that shit, bro. Not saying that we, we just don't take it there. Like, we know it's expecting a violence. And that's another thing. Another reason why women put their hands on me because they don't expect violence. When men uh, go to approach men, we expect violence. Even on the calmest nigga. I could be his 13th reason why he want to get crazy today. So it's like, I want women to really listen to this podcast and not feel attacked. I want you to really think about your upbringing, your upbringing as a young girl. Yeah, you had chores, but were you, were any, your mother or your father your girl ever say to care about men's mental health, to care about getting the men faces, to respect men. You don't talk back, you don't talk crazy to men. No, it's, it's a programming. The, the girls that y'all see, y'all got friends that are having multiple baby fathers. Who's holding them accountable? You not, because she could go fuck the next nigga and get another bro and get another um get um uh, child support. So we congratulating you for making an irresponsible decision when you were supposed to wake up. We got Plan B. We got um birth control. We got so much shit that prevent babies, and you still making an irresponsible decision, knowing that this nigga ain't shit, knowing that this nigga got two, three other baby mothers. Look, look at this. Look at Nick Cannon's situation. Nick Cannon, niggas was want niggas want to violate Nick Cannon, but he's having consensual sex with these women. These women know that they're seventh baby mother. They still having sex with them because it's no, it, why is no repercussion for making an irresponsible decision or responsible one in your in her perspective because Nick Cannon has money, right? So do, you would need mainly money to raise a kid. So I'm gonna get money if it, but, but what about you not the one that's gonna get the kid? I mean get the money. He got split them, he got split a million dollars between eight to ten baby mothers. Like what about if you're not and then where you stuck? Oh Nick Cannon ain't shit and and blah 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 and now you going off about it. But it was an irresponsible decision. You seen other girls do it. You hopped on the train and hoping that you was gonna live a good life. You went over there. You um had sex unprotected with a celebrity, hoping you get taken care of. <laughs> I just want y'all to see things from a different perspective, ladies. I, I, I'm not attacking y'all. I just want y'all to see it from a real different perspective. And as far as like the internet, Erica Mena, I don't feel sorry for Erica Mena. And I, I, yeah, she looked like a fucking zombie. Yes. But my nigga, Erica Mena was nasty to people at one point, bro. Erica Mena was extremely nasty. And this is my thing. And this is, this is person, personally, me, we knew Safari wasn't shit. We know why Safari, Safari, look, my nigga, let's be honest, bro. And let's really break this down because I really look at shit from a different perspective, right? Safari came from an abusive relationship. With Nicki Minaj, you could tell that we y'all want to hold 
you could tell that Nikki was probably verbally abusive to him. The nigga is lame. He's corny. He's he's, he's corny. She never claimed him throughout these years. I I got old videos of her like her doing like webcam videos, and she's not allowing far, Safari to even come in the screen. Then at that time, labels want. Always want artists to seem single because they're gonna fantasize about their music. So that's why Fab was always promoted to us as single. The whole time Fab was in a relationship. The same for Nikki. He gets out of you gonna get a nigga that is finally free from the shackles of his ex girlfriend. You gonna date him and have a baby with him, knowing that he just got abused. You ain't gonna tell that man to go get help, nothing. And then you gonna date him and have a baby. Then you want us to feel sorry. And you crying about fucking child support. And you got your own money. Niggas is making mad money on Love & Hip Hop. It's like what? Some niggas is like 25K an episode. Some niggas at 30. Some niggas at 7. Niggas is making mad money. You crying about child support. Then, hold on. If I'm not mistaken, I don't know if she got two kids by this nigga or one. Is it fucked up? Yes. But I really don't have no sympathy and empathy for Because you celebrity niggas don't. Y'all don't care. Y'all sit there and make this, y'all see a girl make a mistake with a nigga and go right behind her and make the same mistakes as the girl was telling you. This nigga ain't shit. This nigga did it. You see how Safari was acting when he got loose. When he became single, you see how Safari was acting, bro. You see how Safari was acting, my nigga. He was acting like an uncaged animal, my nigga. Then on top of that, you, I think she, I think... You went back and doubled down and had another baby by this nigga? After the first? Am I am I bugging here? Do they, do they got two kids? You went back and doubled down. So why should we feel, feel sympathy if you double down? I'm trying to go to this page. That's why it's taking me a long time to see if it's two kids. Because I think it's two kids. <laughs> and if it's one... Regardless, bro, you wasn't supposed to do that. Then we supposed to have sympathy for you. Like, yeah, nah, come on. I can't have sympathy for that shit, bro. I like like people just making irresponsible decisions. It's like I everything that, all the choices that you made from before 25, I it's I like I don't even I was also arguing with this about somebody. I don't think you're an adult until you're 25. Like I don't look at you like and I'm like really like cracking down on you and being like extremely like judgmental on your decisions because 18 is not an adult to me, bro. Why you think colleges recruit people that are 18 because you, you naive, you, you don't got credit. Your credit is clean. Um, we can soup you in to saying like, all right, this is what you're going to be. You want to be a doctor. Now you owe us. You know what I'm saying? So you got doctors that's working just to pay off their student loans. So, 18, the 21 is just like, 21 is just like, I, right, I'm not 18 no more. I'm just a little bit old. Now I'm legally, I could drink. So now you get into, you was probably drinking before, but now you could go, now you got accessible. You want to, when you reach an age of accessibility, son, you're going to continue to do it. So now you make it hard for the sisters. You might take your last little $50, go buy a bottle and drink. Not knowing that you was depressed because you're coming from the, the whole college thing. The whole college thing is, a whole bunch of depressed, loose kids that probably had strict parents just wilding out. 25 is when the mind develops and then matures. And that's when the decisions I feel like should be made. Like, that's when we should start judging you. Like, and I don't, that's why I don't be feeling sorry for adults that make crazy ass decisions. Because all, if you're not telling me that the sex is not non consensual, then why should I feel bad for you? You slept with, and then you went and made the same nigga that was treating you grimes, you went and made an OnlyFans with. How bad am I feeling? You continue to fuck him. It's not like you were trying to get away from him. He wasn't shit. Now you want to you wanna cry on, cry on love and hip hop? You made an OnlyFans with this nigga. How bad can he be? Man, bro, I don't be believing in these celebrities, my nigga. I don't be believing in these celebrities, bro. Like, to be honest with you, I, I lack I lack empathy and sympathy for this shit. I, I really do, but I'm ending off the episode. I hope I gave y'all a good episode, some great insight. Ladies, don't feel attacked. I just really had to, I want to bring a different perspective to y'all. Um, 
Man. Man, man, listen. It's episode 80. Peace and stay black.